Hello and thank you for joining us. You're listening to a We Do Talk with David Jakes. Hey everyone, welcome back to another We Do Talk. And this actually marks about a year that I've been doing these. It was August of 2020 that I did my first one. And my mission in starting this was really to address issues surrounding mental health and mental health advocacy. And it's taken on a little bit of a life form of its own. And I've had some amazing guests some people that I've talked to. And we've talked about other obstacles in life, such as overcoming alcoholism, living with epilepsy, prostate cancer, but really the, the thrust of what I want to talk about is mental health. And I am always amazed at the great people that are not just willing to talk to me, but enthusiastic to talk to me. And the word that comes to mind when I talk about all of these great people is magical. It's a, a magical experience. So I have another amazing guest with me today. And appropriately, when I use the word magic, he is a professional magician. So joining us from the fine city of Liverpool in England, we have David Burgess. So David, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to We Do. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate your time and inviting me onto this um, lovely platform where hopefully uh, we can have a deep dive conversation and um, help some people. Absolutely. And so as as way of introduction, um, David, you are a professional magician. I've never met anybody that makes a living out of magic. Uh, It's always something that I've never really known very much about. So I'd love to hear more about that. But you also had a career in sales earlier on. And in addition to that, uh, you are a mental health advocate like me. Um, You are qualified in neuro-linguistic programming, a hypnosis practitioner, a coaching expert, and a mental health first aider. And one of the things I read in, in one of your profiles was you say about yourself, my mission is to bring the magic back into people's lives, giving them the tools to gain confidence in their abilities. So absolutely great mission. Uh, would love to talk about all of this stuff. So first off, um, you're a magician, you make a living out of magic. Um, how did that all happen? I assume you don't just wake up one day and say, yeah, I want to be a magician, that something has to happen to trigger it. So what was the beginning of your life as a magician? I started off by getting a Paul Daniels set when I was about six and then picked up magic from then and just kept on practicing and practicing. Didn't really do anything with it as a career um, until about four years ago. So I would imagine that if you've been doing this and making a living out of it for four years, Um, this thing called COVID happened about a year and a half ago. And for somebody in a business like yours, where it, I would imagine, was 100% going out and performing at different events and entertaining people, it's very much an in-person business. How did COVID change your life? And did you suddenly find yourself imploding with with no work? The way I work is I take a 50% um deposit and then i take the balance one week before the date of the actual event so as you can imagine um i was expecting um quite a lot of um balances to be paid in 2020 and then literally overnight there was people um not necessarily cancelling but moving their dates so obviously 2021 and 2022 and some have even some unfortunately had to cancel their weddings. You know, COVID's affected the entire world, and and in in particular, um, the entertainment industry is being affected um the most, and because obviously all venues are being closed, and then and then they've been reopened, but they've been reopened with limited numbers due to social distancing. So, yeah, it was a struggle. Um, I'm not gonna lie. And then you know, I I, I tried my hand at the Zoom presentations, which is which is great again because you know, um. That was that was a way of keeping the money coming in, um, but yeah, it did affect my business. And you know, you, it's like anything; you've just got to, you know, what can you do? You can either two things: you can either bury your head in the sand, or you can just plod on and and make it work. And you know, I had to take another job, um, delivering um, takeaways from my mate's shop just to keep a roof off the on the door. I haven't; I'm not at the stage yet where, and I don't I don't think I'm going to be because obviously the world opened up, but. You know, I was contemplating on taking another part-time job just to tide me over until obviously everything gets back to normal. Um, because you know you've got to do what you've got to do to keep a roof over your head. Because I've got two um, beautiful kids, four and two, and my wife that I've got to you know, you know, keep and maintain the house. So yeah, aren't you doing a teaching course in magic as well? Isn't that something you started doing recently? COVID has been a a um, 
a blessing in disguise, shall we say, because I've been talking about setting up a magic school teaching online for a number of years and it's all been talk and then I've talked myself out of it. I've got into my own head and blah, 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 blah. And then um, I'm in the process of actually finalizing um, some things where it's going to be um, all online. So it's, and it's for most, most ages, but I'm aiming it particularly for children because it's just basically a way to have fun and engage and they can engage with their friends their school friends they can have a social thing but also it teaches confidence and a life skill so it's having fun and giving um, them that inner confidence to be able to go and approach any situation um with the knowledge of having the skill set of magic but there's there's a lot more levels to just magic and just turn up doing a trick because you you have to basically you know how to approach people and then it gains that confidence, and but in a fun way. So yeah, so um, it's it's almost ready, but not quite yet. So um, keep posting that. What I'll do is I'll share my details at the end of this, if that's okay, and um, where people can keep following me and then um, keep an eye out of when I actually launch it officially. Absolutely. And so, you know, I do a lot of things in the business and finance world, and I always say to people, if you want your business to grow, you have to keep on reinventing yourself. You can't hit something that works and say that's going to work for the rest of life because you have to adapt to changes. You have to be able to reinvent, create new things and and keep on moving and recognize who your customers are and, and work with them and give them everything that they want. So that's that's a double awesome for me because not only are you keeping your business current, but you're also doing something that really helps people. And I think, you know, gaining that confidence, learning those skills is is something which is is truly magnificent. So so great that you've been able to do that. Um, so, so David, let's switch gears a little bit here and uh, talk a little bit about your earlier life. And when I see all of the advocacy that you have for, for mental health and helping people, there has to be a lot more to it than just the magic work that you do and, and how you make a living and how you support your family. And uh, you did undergo some fairly severe challenges in your earlier life. Would you mind talking a little bit about your, your earlier life, your school days and things that happened there and help actually shape you as an adult? I was bullied in school and I was bullied um, so severely that I was both physically and mentally, verbally bullied in regards to, you know, being called names like, um, you know, my name's Burgess, but I used to get burgers and beard. You can obviously fill in the blank on the last bit. And that on a constant level and then actually physically getting you know, punched and kicked every day or most days in school. I just hated school. And then when I actually left school and joined college, I found out that I was dyslexic. So not only did I have the bullying, I thought that obviously I'm 36. So back in our days when we were in school, you were just put into all the lower sets. It wasn't like a scene um, disability dyslexia. It was just seen that you were thick or you were the class clown or you were misbehaving. And it wasn't, it was just that I had a different way of learning. As you can see with the way I move my hands, I'm a, I'm a kinesthetic, touchy-feely doer learner. Whereas if somebody actually, you know, sat down and, and you know, got me to do the actual physical touching as I'm, as they're teaching rather than they just talk to you, then I would have learned a lot more. But yeah, I was bullied from the age of six and I had um, su- suicidal um, tendencies and thoughts when I was around about eight. I used to... And also, if this triggers anybody, um, obviously, you can just switch off this path. just need to make sure that I'm aware that I'm obviously not triggering anything for anybody. But yeah, um, what I'm going to talk about for the next five minutes might be triggering. So if you want to just skip through to this bit, and actually, just to show your viewers as well, when I do that, I'll do that. And then that means I've I've ended that part of the conversation. So then that way, they've got a visual cue, um, because some people might be going through something like this, or it might be a bit too raw for them. So I just want to be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, so I know I was, when I was seven or eight, I used to put my dressing gown around my neck and tie it over my bunk bed and cry my eyes out, thinking that nobody loved me and I, I didn't want to be here anymore. And then um, my mum and dad tried the best. They moved, they moved me from a different school. The bullying continued in there. And then um, then they moved me to a different school because I moved again. And then <laughs> and then, then I moved from there, I moved to South Park. But in my first primary school, there was about seven of them used to bully me. And um, one of them grabbed my hands on the desk and the other one pulled my chair from underneath me. And I hit my chin into the desk and bit straight into my lip. And then I moved from that school to another um, school, which was a little bit better. The other bit more of a, of a head teacher who was a bit more clued up. And then 
Um, I was bullied in that one, but not as bad because that's when I kind of like got into my magic. So I t- kind of used my magic, if you like, like a shield to like deflect the bullying by entertaining them. So it can't kind of ease the um, the bullying. My brother lent me his old Berghaus jacket, and um, it was a it was a dark blue one. I'll never forget it. It was very old. It probably be if I still had it to this day, it'd probably worth like thousands of pounds because. They got the retro one self like more now. Um, but what happened is I remember seeing um, this particular lad. He stood on a pencil sharpener and took the blade out of the pencil sharpener. I thought, why has he done that? And then he put his hand up and said, Miss, can I go to the toilet? And then the other bully put his hand up and said, Miss, can I go to the toilet? I really need to go. I really need to go. Made a big scene. So don't go on then. And then they both came back in together, sniggering and like laughing. And I was like, what have they done? And then it was, this was the last class before home time. And then, I went out, went to put my jacket on, and it had slash marks in my brother's jacket where they just slashed and just defaced his jacket for, for no reason whatsoever. And again, obviously, I was like, I had to tell my brother, and then my brother went in and was like, what? Well, you know, because he just, and it, was, it wasn't a cheap jacket, my brother's, but, but you know, still on the, the, the slash, the insides of that, just, just out of pure nastiness. Yeah. And then fast forward to when I was around about 13, 14, I just got into the wrong crowds, started doing drugs like weed then went on to cocaine and speed and all these other things and just mixed with the wrong crowds. And then I took myself out of, out, like, I looked at myself and thought, what am I doing here? I thought I'm in the wrong place here. So I thought, and I was fortunate to have that built in um, moral compass and like mind. Although I was, I was always having a fun time. I thought, this isn't right. You're not here for this reason. And then I was going out with a girl at the time and she danced prerogatively with one of my mates in front of me, started to like grind with him in front of me when I was drinking in the club underage, as we all have been. Well, don't do that, kids, but yeah, but we've all been there. So and, and I was about 17, 16 at the time. And um, she, I said, don't do that. So she'd done it again. And then everything just flooded back because obviously I was, I was probably drunk and, and I had a bit of like drugs in my system. And that wasn't the cause of why I'd done this, but that was probably a combination of everything. So I thought, I love her. She doesn't love me, so that's, everybody doesn't love me. So everything came flooding back. I remember just standing up and just headbutting this metal table three times and then just bursting out of this club. I don't even remember how I got home, but I was crying my eyes out, like literally like sobbing like my heart out. And then went round the back of the house and we've got, um, I'm six foot four um, and we've got those old, um, not old, those trestle things, you know, which you grow plants up the side of and it looks nice when you go into yeah. the archway. And I just found this nearest cord, tied it at the top of it, tied it round my neck. And then again, because it was a cry for help, I um, bent my knees to try and asphyxiate myself. And and then my brain was saying, no, stand up. But I said, no, I overrid that part of my brain somehow because I thought, no, I've had enough. And I just let myself go loose. And then I must have been choking myself. And then next minute, I remember waking up on the floor with like blood all on my nose. And I was like, what? Because and what had happened is the cord had snapped. And then and I'd obviously, because I passed out, I've just slammed my face straight onto the floor. And then... um I ran, went into the house to open the door. My dad said, son, son. I said, sorry, I said, dad, dad, I've done something stupid. I've done something stupid. So he kind of like brushed it off. I said, oh, like not, not in a nasty way, but you know, to try and not make me panic. And he said, oh, you silly bugger, you know. And he went out and checked the cord and he said, son, you're here for a reason. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, because that cord you've put around your neck doesn't snap. It's like an industrial strength cord. So I'm here for a reason. And then that's when... I, I went on this journey and, you know, and that's it. And I'm going to, whilst I'm still on the subject, I'm going to talk about a school that I went in and I give a similar talk to. And then I can do the the hand, the hand gesture so anybody can listen into the other conversation, the more fun bit. And um, there's a school which I've been invited into a few times. They do a deep learning day and I went in and I give this talk, like what I'm doing now, but a little bit more in depth and with the dramatic pauses. And when I was like pausing, I was slamming my hand on the desk for the, for when I pulled me arms under me and even the kids and you can, I'm an empath. So I could tell the bullies and the victims naturally, you know, and although they were like, I could see them all like this on every word. And then one of them reached out to me on Instagram and said, thanks very much for your story. It really helped me. And I said, oh, right. And he said, um, I said, why? He said, I was getting bullied. And I said, what happened? He said, I decided to stand up to me bullies after your after your talk. And I said, 
I said, oh, what did you say to them? And they said, why Why are they making his life even more insignificant than he does himself? And I said, oh, and what happened? And they said, oh, um, they stopped bullying me. And I was like, oh, great, fantastic. And he said, I want to say thank you. And I said, oh, you, you just have? He said, no, because I was actually contemplating on taking my own life. And this is a 14-year-old um, mm. uh, lad. So I was like, right, okay, that's probably why I've been put on the planet to share my message to help people to understand, you know, in particular young men and old men and every, any man, because we do have that um, pressure that we put on ourselves, not society really, because society's moved on a lot. It's just the old stiff upper lip, you know, men don't cry, boys don't cry, you've got to be the man in the house and all that. And we can't show our vulnerable side or because it, it's, it's treated as a weakness. And if we say that to our friends, they might laugh, or if you're in that, like a building situation, they might laugh, and then that's when I decided to do the mental health course, which we'll come on to. So I'm going to do this gesture now. So that's everything done, finished now of that conversation. Yeah. Wow. Th- thank you, David. Thank you for sharing that. That is a pretty amazing story. There are so many other stories around like that. And that's one of the reasons why I started doing this and, and started being an advocate myself, because I do believe that We all have stories to tell. Many of us who've been through a lot of different things. I I had a lot of unhappy times as a child myself. I had suicidal thoughts. I didn't really act on them, but the thoughts were there, that's for sure. And the thing which I think is really important to know is that, uh, I mean, for both you and me, you know, we're not doctors, we're not psychiatrists, we're not therapists, not medically qualified to diagnose anyone or treat anyone or prescribe medication or anything like that. But, uh, you know, I feel about myself and probably you do as well, that what I am qualified to do is to tell my story and encourage other people to do the same. And the more stories that are told, the more the stigma goes away. And, you know, here I look at, you know, somebody like yourself that I look at as being a successful contributor to society. You're a family man. You're you seem like you have a great life and I think you do have a great life, but it's not been without the struggles to get you there. It hasn't been this golden ray of sunshine all the way and you've just been able to capture on all the privileges out of life and just enjoy everything because it, it's been a struggle. It's been a journey. Everybody's life is a journey. So the more we talk about this, and, and I absolutely agree with you that that demographic of adult men is very underserved when it comes to mental health and to mm. the tools that are available. And and you're right, there is also still the stigma of us not talking about things in this way. Um, one little thing I'd, I'll share is that about a month ago, um, I was on a backpacking trip with some friends, mostly guys my own age. And uh, one of them asked me about this uh, channel of podcasts I do, and I was talking about it. And people started sharing their experiences. And a great thing happened. One of the guys had his son with him, who was about 20, 21 years old, who just came, sat down and listened. And he said a very poignant thing at the end. And he said, it was just one liner. He said, I didn't know that people outside of my generation talk about mental health. And that's great on two levels. It's one that the younger generation is talking about these things and they're doing it in an uninhibited way. And secondly, there's some acknowledgement that people of an older generation are doing it as well. So the more people share, the more people talk about without shame, without guilt, and just say, this is a part of me, this is what happened, and this is what I did to overcome it. So um, much kudos to you, and and thanks again so much for sharing that. Oh no, you're welcome, and I'll say, that's why I've done an NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming Timeline Therapy and Hypnosis Practitioners Course. Um, basically for myself, but then I started looking to doing like to use that to help others, and I'm doing my uh, master prac in that with in November. So, um, so then I'll be a master prac in NLP, timeline therapy, and hypnosis because those tools helped me, and I want to be able to help them by coaching other people as well. So, I'm looking into doing more of the coaching side of things as well, or, or coaching slash mentoring you know, people who are going through, uh, you know, a tough time to basically just say, you know what, these are the tools I use. And many times it just really needs that validation that if you're going through something, it's not because you're a bad person. It's not because you're weak. It's not because you're stupid. It's 
many different reasons. You, you can't say there's a reason, specific reason for anything. It's usually, as you say, you know, when you were a kid, it was a number of different things. Um, and the, the thing that, um, you know, kind of surprises me is that as an adult, you seem such a outgoing, happy, friendly, warm individual. Um, I would imagine like, you know, if I was a uh, uh, 10, 11, 12 year old at school, you know, you'd be a great guy to have as a best friend. So, you know, why do people pick on you? I mean, you may not have an answer for that, but you know, why did that happen? Well, it's like anything, um, by the way, I'm, I'm just looking through because there's a book, there's a, there's a story on, um, for people which, which I, I see my bullies and I thank them. And I thank, you know, I'm grateful for the fact that we go through these struggles because if we didn't have these struggles, we wouldn't be the people that we are today. Um, we certainly wouldn't be able to, you know, voice our, our um, stories to basically help others who might be at the pinnacle points. Like I said, alluded to earlier with that boy who was like, thanks, because if I hadn't heard that, he might, you know, have done something which I've done, which is stupid, but because I shared that with him and he's got that power to stand up to his bullies and think, you know what, if he can do it, I can do it. He's, he's successful, right? I'm going to stand up to them. And then, you know, and that, 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 that just made me so, because even though it's that one person that you've helped with your story, you know that's why we do go through our struggles. So I was just I was just looking through, and um, I'm going to find in a moment while whilst I'm multitasking. But yeah, to answer the question, um, I found out that one of my bullies um had was a, from a single home parent, and he just lost his mum. So again, you know, you don't know what's going on in their household, and a lot of the time, you know, they're going through abuse themselves. I they get embattled by their mum and dad, or or they're getting abuse from the the partner or spouse or. This is if you're being bullied in adult life. Um, you know, there's a number of reasons why people do the things they do. There's not some people are just genuinely horrible people, but I like to think that you know not everybody is that way, and they're not. You know, it's just a way of a learned behaviour. You know, sometimes there might there's something underlining that person because they have to make themselves feel in charge of of you or their. So that's given them their superpower because really they know that. They're not that, they're weak inside. And, you know, when you know that, it gives you, I know it's a bit, it's going to sound a bit weird, but it'll give you comfort in the fact that, okay, I'm helping this person because this person's yeah. struggling. So it gives you empathy for them because you think, oh my God, how crap must their lives be if in order for them to get some sort of pleasure, they have to take it out on me. Their lives must be really, really, really crap or really, really rubbish yeah. or whatever foul language you want to use. And then that just gives you a little switch in your head and changes. And, and I allude this to road rage as well. So when you're driving along yeah. in a car, those that drive, you know, you, you, somebody cuts you up and you're like, Arr! or somebody gives you the finger. You know, I, I, I don't react now. I used to, I used to be like, Arr! 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 But, that, but now I go, I'm about, he might be in a rush to go and see his mum who's, who's, you know, just being rushed into hospital or he might be going to see his daughter or he's late for for his daughter's graduation or and when you when you reframe it in your head it's like oh okay it just makes you where you react 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 so you just take mm -hmm. a few deep breaths in out through your mouth and um I also do Wim Hof um breathing techniques I highly recommend anybody that's suffering with um stress anxiety or anything like that just um do your research on Wim Hof. Um, he's got a free app, and I've been doing it for years. Um, but I'll, I'll give this teaching technique now, which I want everybody to do, even when when they're feeling stressed because or anything that they before they make a decision or before they speak or or they go and say anything nasty to anybody. It's called box breath. So you breathe in for four seconds. So you go and you hold it for four seconds, one, two, three, four, and then you out your mouth for four seconds. And then you hold your breath out for four seconds, and then you breathe in and you just repeat that. And you do you can do this in the toilet, in, in work, in, in the bathroom, and you find that, that just resets your brain. You're like, oh, okay, now, and then you can address the situation in a calm manner rather than a reactive, exploding manner. Yeah, the, 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 those, techniques are, are really important and they're very easy. You just have to think about them. And what I find, uh, I became conscious at work many, many years ago, I found when I got stressed that I was breathing in a very shallow way. 
and you know not hydrating not drinking water and stuff like that if mm. I was having a stressful day at work that's what would happen and that only makes it worse and you know just taking that little bit of time you know even you know head head to the bathroom do whatever you do just take a little break away from people and just do those kind of self-help exercises they're very easy and and they can mean a lot they can really be very beneficial Okay, so, so David, here we are. Um, you know, thanks again for talking about your journey. Um, my feeling is always that by hearing one of these stories, if it helps just one person, it's done some good. I can only imagine that hearing this, so many people would resonate with it, would understand it, would relate to it, and realize that I don't have to be in this dark place. I don't have to be in this bad place. So, so what would be your advice to say a young person that might be bullied at school or a young adult that is having negative thoughts and even having thoughts of self-harm or an adult that is just feeling in a bad place? What, what would be the first piece of advice you'd give somebody to, to, to go and get help or to do something to help themselves? Well, there's loads of, um, there's loads of helplines out there now for and, and wherever you're watching this, um, you know, whether this be from you know abroad and you know in America or wherever you are in the country, um, there will be helplines. And also, if you look, just do a quick Google search. Um, don't Google what you're going through. Google like help in that certain area. You know, you've got you've got loads of things like you've got the Samaritans, which are in the UK. There's apps as well, like there's the Mindfulness app, which is a great app, and there's loads of other apps there which helps with. Um, things but you know just speak to somebody as well who you feel that you can trust but tell them that you know it's a trust thing and if you're a young person and you can speak to your parents don't worry your parents aren't going to judge you and or, or before before you actually lay down the line because I've been fortunate the fact that my mum and dad have brought me up to be able to know that I'm loved and that I won't be judged if I come to them with anything so if you are the type of um, young person who you feel like, oh, my mum and dad might judge me, they might do. But before you share that, because obviously I don't know your circumstances, but before you sh share what you're about to share, just lay down the rules of the land. So it's basically say, mum, dad, I'm going to share something with you now, which is really serious and it really it's really affecting me. So I need you not to please dismiss this. And to and to and to don't blow your top off. I haven't done anything bad or anything like that. And then if they agree to that, you turn off the telly. You tell them to turn off the phones. So then that way you you will they they will then be okay. This must be serious. I need to listen to this. And then address it with them and just open up to your parents. That's if it's a safe environment too, or a really good friend. And when I say friend or family member. Um, somebody who you know isn't going to go back into your school and start telling everybody or, or you know, if it is a family friend, again, somebody, if you don't want them to say it to your parents, because, you know, you've got to remember that if you're sharing that with somebody, their initial thing is they want to tell your parents, and it, but you, you can do it together in a roundabout way because I found that, you know, my parents were quite, um, you know, good with me in that sense because I knew that I could tell my mum and dad anything. And I always did. And some of the stuff they might not want to have here, like the drugs and stuff like that. However, I knew that I wasn't being judged for my shares. Um, so that would be my top advice. But if you can't share with family, friends or anything like that, there's loads of advice and helplines out there. I'm pretty sure David will be able to um, put in the YouTube description some um, numbers or, or websites, if that's okay with yourself, David. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do that where you can look and get professional um, help and advice, you know, I do help people because um, I'm NLP, timeline therapy and hypnosis trained. However, you know, that's, it's not like a, a, a one cap fits all, you know, people might need different things, different things work for different people. You know, my story might resonate with some people. It might not. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. But just remember um, that this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. Nothing is permanent. Everything passes and goes through phases it's not the end of the world. At that specific time and place where you're at, you feel like, oh my God, I am the only person that this is happening to in the entire world. What what am I going to do? There's nobody in the entire world who's going through exactly what I'm going through. And trust me, there's a lot more people than you think who are going through exactly 
the same scenario, i.e. they're getting abused, they're getting battered by the mum and dad, they're getting battered by a family friend, they're, they're, they're getting bullied in the workplace, they're getting verbally discriminated again. There's literally, because when I've shared my story on Clubhouse in particular, I've had about, must be hundreds of DMs saying, oh my God, your story resonated with me. I've been exactly where you've been. So trust me, you know, you, you're not the only person out there and, you know, the, the support for you don't think that there isn't because there is. And always remember that somebody out there loves you. And if you feel that they don't, I'm just letting you know now, I love you. So you can't go anywhere because I love you. Because that's the way of sometimes we just think nobody loves us or nobody cares. I genuinely care about you. And you're probably thinking, well, how can he? Because he doesn't even know me. I don't need to know you because I know that you are a beautiful soul and you are here to do amazing things and remember that. And I think it's worth mentioning that you and I actually met in the clubhouse room and I heard your story and that's when I reached out to you and, and how we connected. So it that can be very powerful. And, you know, I think that is amazing advice, David. Thank you so much. And one thing I'd add to that is if you are the person that somebody is sharing their problem with, because they trust you, it's a family member, it's a good friend or whatever. Best situation, if you're doing it in person, if you have you know, one of your kids, a sibling, even a parent, whoever it is, or a good friend, if you're in the same room and somebody shares something traumatic and they need your help, to me, the best thing you can do, go give them a big hug mm -hmm. because they need that mental help, but also that physical reassurance of just put your arms around them, hold them tight, no matter who they are, and say, I care. That physical contact and that feeling of physical connection with the mental connection goes a long, long way. It, it really helps. Now, unfortunately, if you're talking... You feel yeah, safe. It, it, it's a place place of safety exactly and you know if you're talking like we are across the atlantic and thousands of miles away you can't do it but uh, it's very powerful yeah and i just want i just want to add on add on to what you just said then dave as well with the mental health um thing if this is goes for anybody who thinks and this is for teachers who might be watching this or or um or your work colleagues or parents and there'll just be something just slightly and if you can't put your finger on it or you just get this gut feeling we'll do a um a yeah, scenario david so Hi, David. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. No. How are you really? And that's the key. So you just say, are you okay? And then because the automatic response is, oh, I'm fine. Or yeah, I'm good. And then you say, no, how are you really? And you look them dead in the eye. You be completely silent and you wait for them to speak. And 99.9 .9 out of 10, they will then open up to you. And they will say, well, actually, I'm going through this or this. And then you unjudgmentally listen. You don't say another word. You don't try and interject your feelings or your opinions. You don't do what's called face leakage, which is like if they tell you something really bad, you go like that. Or you, just, you just basically unapologetically listen to what they're actually saying. And then you say, okay, and how are we going to get through this together? And then you help them. So then that way they know that they've got someone in their corner who's going to help them get through this. And that would be my top tip. So ask twice. Yeah. Don't just ask the once. Yeah. Try, try and make sure that that person is not feeling isolated and helpless because that, that goes a long way. So wonderful advice. Um, David, thank you so much for sharing your story, your thoughts, your advice to everybody. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. And um, if anybody wants to reach you, what's the best way of finding you? So you can uh, follow me on my website, um, which is www.dbmagician.co.uk. And you can also hit me up on Instagram, which is db underscore magician. This, this is me on the front cover of Switch On To Business magazine. They wrote an article on me. There you go, on page 13. And then they said, Oh, we need a new we need a new cover for the front of it. So I was like, okay, great. So that then they put me on the front cover of a magazine. So all this, if I'd have gone through with what what I said, I'd, what I said I was going through before, and I'd actually gone through with it, none of this would have been possible. Would you like to see a magic trick, David? Before we wrap up, I'd love to. Sure. This is my 
close-up mats. I'm just going to put that there. Um, so let's uh, do this. So usually I wouldn't be able to see this because um, we'd be face to face and but I can see it because obviously there's a camera. So David, I just want you to shout stop for me whenever you like. Shout stop. Stop. Here, yeah, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's a free choice. Five of diamonds. Now there's no okay. there's no and, and look there's there's no other there's no other five of diamonds or anything in the pack. They are all different. So there's not like it's not like it's a rigged deck or anything. So what I, I usually wouldn't see this, but what we're going to do is this is an observation. So I'm just going to place it on top um, and I'll get you to cut the pack in half and then I'm going to take the rest of the cards and place them all on top of your card like that. Okay. Now, virtually, can you just take your finger and just push it onto the screen on top of the card for me? You have to do it, David, in real life because otherwise it won't work. The magic won't work. Okay. Wow. Did all you right. feel the magic? Look at that, Dave, because what's happened now is one card and one card only should have changed color from all the rest. And it has in a very big way. Now, when I first saw that, I too forgot to clap, but that's okay. Don't worry about it. You're saving your applause till the end. I get that. So if I take the uh, the, the observation is, what was your card? Five of diamonds. Five of diamonds. That would be really impressive if that was now the red-backed five of diamonds, wouldn't it? Let me just have a look. That would be unbelievable. Right, just, let me just have a look. Thank you. Thanks very much. That's the five of diamonds. Thanks, David. Thanks for all the uh, the listeners. I know. I suppose you want to see it is actually the five of diamonds. Oh yeah, I want the proof. No, there's, there's the five. Now I'm going to take the five and I'm going to place it right there so we can see that. That's going to stay in full view. I want you to shout stop whenever you want. Are you ready? Shout stop. Right. Stop. Different. That's different to the five. Yes. Different yes. to the five of diamonds. Yes. It's five of clubs. Yes. So again, yeah. push your finger down in a virtual way. Boop, there we go. And then one card and one card only is going to change colour now from all the rest. One card and one card only. Oh, crap. Well, it's your fault, David, because um, you've you've single-handedly ruined my career. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. No, but can you actually see a card that's changed from all the rest anywhere, Dave? Uh, they all look pretty much the same. Yeah, apart from this one, which has been yeah. the, the full view, which was the Five of Diamonds, right. which is now changed to... The five oh. <laughs> of clubs. And I, th I thought I was responsible for ruining you. <laughs> no, I, 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 always, I always love to tease with that one. So these are two elastic bands. I'll use contrasting colours because this effect looks a little bit more magical. And this is actually going to be taught on my in my magic school as well. Um, so people can sign up and um, and learn how to do this trick. And this trick is the most simplest trick. So as you can see, it's round it's round my finger my finger my thumb is there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just stretch it out. Now I've got the blue one. Can you see that okay there, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so I've got the blue one on top and the pink one on the bottom. Watch if I go like this one, you can probably hear the baby screaming in the background there. So you got one, two, three. And that's when it links through Huh. The actual elastic band. Now that is really linked on there. I just moved that. That's actually linked on there. That's not. That's not messing. That is actually genuinely linked onto the elastic band. The hardest part about this is when you do this one, two, three, and then you unlink them. And if you can imagine, I can literally hand them out to you so you can actually have a look. That is just one, two, elastic bands. Wow. And then. Great. I'll show, you, I'll show you one more. This is uh, the four sevens. So this is a pack of trick. So I'm just going to show you. So this is one, two, three, four sevens. One of the sevens has turned itself face down, mm -hmm. which you can see there is the seven of spades. Now, watch, I can actually take one, two, and then I can show you by clicking my fingers that all the sevens will now turn itself back round. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the four sevens. What if I click my fingers again? One, two, three, sevens. There's the seven of clubs. Click my fingers, the seven of clubs. Now, this is an observation test, David. Okay, so I'm testing the observation here. So I'm going to ask you a question in a moment. So there's the seven of spades turned over. And then this time it's the seven of spades jumps back. And then this time it's the seven of diamonds. Now, do you remember the colour of the backs? They were blue. No, you see, you weren't paying attention because they were all red with a big um, 
black cross along the back of them. I don't even know how you missed that black cross, David. I'm not going to lie. Now, a lot of people often turn to me and they say, David, how did you do that? Uh, David, how did you do that? I'm glad you asked, David, because otherwise that would be in a really awkward long pause. <laughs> and then, well, it's actually all done with mirrors, you see. There is actually no blue backs. There is no red backs with a cross. It's all done with mirrors. Huh. And that wow. is what I do for a living, guys. If anybody wants to reach out to you and book you, I'm sure you'd, you'd be happy to to talk to them and, and show them some of the amazing stuff. Appreciate it. And thanks very much, mate, for having me. No, thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you today and thanks for everything you shared here. And thank you everybody else for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel. We upload a new video every week and please feel free to leave your comments below. Until next time, I wish you all the magic in the world, good health, good well-being, and see you next time. We upload a We Do Talk every week, so if you enjoyed this one, please subscribe and leave your comments below.